you've probably been seeing headlines about the jobs report, but what is this actually and what does it mean for you? The jobs report is released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, usually on the first Friday of every month. And in this report is how many jobs were gained or lost over the previous month. And this indicator is something that the Federal Reserve watches extremely closely. Now remember that the Fed has a dual mandate with the first being maximum employment and the other being stable inflation. And so the Fed is watching this number to be able to make a decision on whether or not they should raise rates or lower rates or even hold them steady. And all of this is based upon what's happening in the jobs report and other data like the CPI or the PCE, which we'll talk about later. But specifically, the jobs report gives the Fed an idea of what's happening with employment. Now, this time around, something kind of big happened because it turns out that the Bureau of Labor Statistics needed to revise the previous month's numbers by just 250,000 jobs. Now, these revisions happen every month, and usually it's not that big of a deal. But this time, it kind of just changes the whole picture on exactly how well the economy is actually doing at the moment. But for us to really understand even what came out in these numbers or what can happen moving forward, we need to understand this report fully. So let's break that down. So what we're looking at right here is a website and a software called TradingView. And on this website, essentially, you can go and look at data in financial markets as well as economic data on a chart. So specifically what's on the chart right now is what's called the non-farm payrolls number and this is the net amount of jobs added to the non-farm payrolls over the past month now let's break down what that really means and how this whole report works so there's two different parts of the report there's the establishment survey which is a survey of businesses and then you have the household survey which is a survey of households and now in the establishment survey, there are a few different things that the report will cover. The first being non-farm payrolls. And you'll hear about this as NFP, which once again is the first Friday of every month. And it usually creates a lot of volatility in the market. But the non-farm payrolls is net new jobs, excluding farms, private homes, and other sectors that are more volatile and or seasonal right because if people aren't working at farms just because of the time of year then you don't want to include that in your primary jobs data now the next thing that's in the establishment survey is a breakdown of jobs that are being added by sector so you might have construction retail and healthcare, and you might see different trends right in the data that's being released in the establishment survey. Next, you have the wages or the average hourly earnings. So this is used to track wage inflation. How much are wages going up? And then you have hours or basically on the average work week, how much are people working? And this gives you an idea of how much demand there is for labor. Now in the household survey, we have a few key metrics one being the unemployment rate. And the unemployment rate is the percentage of people that are in the labor force that are actively looking for work but cannot find a job. Next, you have labor force participation, which is the percentage of working age population, which is 16 and above, who are either working already or they are actively looking for work. Now, the reason we need to look at both of these numbers is because you could have a low unemployment rate meaning that people who are seeking employment are employed, but you could also have a low labor force participation, meaning that people are choosing not to work and they're dropping out of the workforce. And the reason that this is an issue is because essentially for the government, right, this could mean lower taxes. And it might be a structural sign of the fact that there's some imbalance between the supply and demand for labor. If companies aren't paying wages that people are willing to work for, then they might not participate in the workforce. And there's much more to look at there. And we're just kind of staying on the surface level here, but just something to be thinking about. Next in the household survey, you also have a breakdown of demographics. So you can see the different age, gender, and education metrics 
that are changing by the month and how they fit into the rest of these numbers. Now, here's the thing that really matters, right? Like, what does this mean for me as an investor or someone who's just concerned with what's happening in the economy? So here's how to look at the jobs report. If you have a hot report or you have a strong jobs report, a lot of new jobs being added in a low unemployment rate, then that could mean that the Fed might hike rates in the future. So essentially having more jobs being added could be a sign of a hot economy. In a hot economy, as we've discussed before, may mean that there will be inflation in the future. And in order to stifle the amount of investment that is happening in the economy, the Fed can then raise rates, which will then disencourage further investment and potentially even hiring and slow everything back down. Now, on the other hand, a weak report might lead to the Fed cutting rates. And in that situation, right, the idea is that you want to spur more investment and get more people hired in the economy. Now, here's where things can get a little bit interesting, because sometimes good news is actually bad news. And sometimes bad news is really good news. Now, here's what I mean by that. The equities market tends to be the risk on sentiment in the market, meaning that when investors want to put risk on, they will put their money into the equities market. And when they want to have risk off, they'll either put their money into dollars or potentially even into bonds as a safer place to park capital. Now, when you have a hot jobs report, right, meaning that a lot of new jobs were added, which should be seen as a good thing, right, for the general economy, it could actually lead to stocks selling off. And the reason for that is because if you have a hot jobs report, then it may be more likely that the Fed would hike rates in the future. And so remember that markets are forward looking. So when markets have an idea that maybe the Fed wants to hike rates in the future, then they're going to look at ways that they can take risk off the table and park their capital somewhere that's a little bit more safe. Because if the Fed hikes rates, then that's going to slow the economy down, which is slow down profits for investors and so on. Now, obviously that also works in the other direction where if you have a slow jobs report and or bad news, that can actually be good news for the equities market. Because if you have a slow jobs report, then there's a chance that the Fed in the future will lower rates. And if the Fed lowers rates, then well, that could provide an opportunity for much more growth in the economy and more profits for corporations and therefore a better opportunity to buy stocks. One thing that's important to understand is none of this is a hard and fast rule. This is just the way that you can kind of look at this in the short term. And most of the time you'll see the markets reacting very quickly to whatever numbers are coming out in the jobs report. And another thing that hopefully you understood from the beginning is like this isn't the only report that matters. And it's not only the Fed's actions that matters, but we do have to think about the dual mandate. And sometimes it can be really hard for the Fed to manage the dual mandate. It's not just the jobs report, it's also inflation. And what we normally would look at for inflation is gonna be the PCE. Uh, and also you have other ones like the CPI, which is a consumer price index and what everyone talks about or what they call headline inflation. And then you have the PPI, which is the producer price index, which is more for uh, the inputs of businesses and what they're paying for materials and things like that. Another thing that I wanted to go over was how you can actually find this data from the jobs report. So uh, the first and easiest place is to actually go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and go to the website. Now today we have it right here on the front page. So you can see right here, the payroll report, and then you can just hit HTML and it'll give you the full breakdown of everything that's in the report. Now, if you didn't want to sit here and read this, you could obviously take this and put it into, you know, your favorite AI tool and let it tell you what's new, what's different and what you should take away from this. Now, what I use is a website called forexfactory.com. And essentially over here, you can get all of what's happening in the economy across the world, really, uh, all the big data points that are coming out on a weekly, daily basis. And specifically, just so that you can see what we had happen this week, which was interesting, or this month, it, we're going to open the details really quickly, and you can see the previous reports. And what we're seeing right now is that, look, the previous report was 144,000, oh, excuse me, 
the actual last time around was 147,000. And that's very interesting because right now you can see without looking at the past one, it says that the previous was 14,000. And so that's where you can see that major discrepancy here between what was the previous report and then how was the revision. And this right here is that revision number, which is, you know, just a little bit different from what we were told a month ago. So just wanted you guys to see exactly what it can look like to check out this kind of information. But always feel free to get your information directly from the US BLS. And just so you know, we are going over a lot of this type of information inside of the paid community, where we're actually tracking macroeconomic data, also major macroeconomic themes. We do a weekly breakdown and we have monthly calls with the community. As of right now, there are still spots available at the original pricing that I discussed in an earlier video. So if you're interested in this at all, just check out the link in the description. And if not, please be assured that we will continue to talk about this stuff on the channel. Let me know what you thought of this video. I wanted to kind of find a way to get information out a little bit more quickly. And I thought that doing this screen share would help. Let me know and I'll see you next time.